Just below the thrust fault sign, the slope steepens again, and when you get to the steep part, you've moved to another group of rocks and another time period, the Great Valley Sequence. It represents the sand and the silt and the clay that was washed into an inland sea from the ancient Sierra Nevada. It was washed onto the Coast Range Ophiolite, that little sliver of unsubducted ocean floor. And actually there's miles and miles of thickness. You can see it from the summit of Mount Diablo looking towards the east. You can see all the upturned edges of those rock layers that were laid down in Mesozoic times. Just a little sliver here, about 75 million years old. And geologists have a great time with the Great Valley Sequence because they can trace the evolution of the Sierra Nevada mountains by the composition of the sandstone. The oldest layers of the Great Valley Sequence are made up of little sand grains of andesite because the Sierra Nevada Mark I were a range of volcanoes while subduction was going on. But the younger layers are made up of granitic fragments. By that time, the old volcanoes were gone and the batholiths of granitic rock that were deep underground were uplifted and shedding their sediment. So the next time you look out from the summit of Mount Diablo to the east, you are looking back into time, tracing the evolution of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Now head across the road. After a short walk to the first interpretive sign on the other side, we'll reach stop 2.2 at a sign labeled Cretaceous Tertiary Boundary. This is a crosswalk from the age of dinosaurs to the age of mammals. On one side, we're standing on Great Valley Sequence about 75 million years old and maybe dodging Tyrannosaurus rex if there was any land here at the time. On the other side, we've made the leap forward to about 50 million, 45 million years old. Age of mammals, the Cenozoic.